Another week, another chance to talk high school football in the Kansas City area with Deion Cassell, Preps KCM, Nick Schaefer, KSHB 41. This is Snap Tackle Pod. Thanks for being here with us as we enter um, week six overall, right, Deion? Six slash five. Yes. Six for us. Six for Missouri. Five for Kansas. Five for Kansas. Five for Kansas. Uh, I I did I had heard rumors in Missouri they had they had toyed with the idea of going down a regular season game. Why? Why wouldn't it be the other way? Kansas toying with the idea of getting an actual regular season game. Uh, I think there's that there, there's always that push to get the state championship games back to that weekend of Thanksgiving. Because you know, it really harms the six basketball programs that have to wait 7 days for their players to show up. Well, well they did. Uh, but then they added an extra <laughs> round to the playoffs, right? Well, they, yeah, they, they, what they, and then they moved, they ended up moving it back up to or back to the week after Thanksgiving. Um, and part of that was because they had to move up the start of fall practice because the way the schedule was set up, um, you were playing your first game, you know, like August 15th, August 18th, which means you were starting practice. I think there was one year practice was going to start July. 30th i think it did and i figured that was just schools going way that that's way too early but there are two things that are in play um adjusting my camera here keep going yeah there are two things that that came into play uh there is the tourism board that came to misha and said august is kind of a dead month anyway when you start to roll into july you're killing our last two weeks of july because because then people were just like, well, we got to you know, get home for that kind of stuff. And then the state of Missouri came up with this, hey, you can't start any earlier than two weeks before Labor Day, the day after Labor Day, which is probably a good thing because there were school districts out there that just kept creeping on back, creeping on back, like starting on August 11th and things like that. And I'm like, yeah. you know, you don't normally end until after Memorial Day or right before Memorial Day and you're shortening that time. Um, I, I, as someone who, when I went to high school, we did not start till the day after Labor Day. Uh, we did not finish until the middle of June, mind you. Um, but you know, it, it, the month of August was becoming a school month. You know, yeah. my wife was going back to work August 1st. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, that's, that's kind of the thing. And so, um, that they bumped those games back to, to the week after Thanksgiving, which I was told, especially by people in St. Louis, a basketball town. You can't, you can't infringe upon the, you know, I don't know, mid-November through mid-March basketball season and right. muck up the gears there because, oh my God, what if they don't get in all those practices? We seem to have survived the last six or seven years with that happening, and we haven't injured any any basketball programs. In fact, I think there's several teams that have won state championships or played for state championships in both sports, and it, it didn't seem to injure them. So, I kind of, I kind of like the way it is now, and I'd love Kansas and Missouri to be on the same schedule play the same amount of games, no matter how you make it work, whether Missouri chops or Kansas adds. I mean, I know they're adding baseball. They're adding some baseball games in Kansas. I, Five more? Oh, it sounded like it, it It was, you know, like moving heaven and earth to get that done. I know. Uh, no, they should add five more basketball games. They should add one more football game like that. I, I almost – I'm kind of like this. I, I don't have a problem – with the amount of basketball games that Missouri plays, I don't see a need for them to play any basketball before Thanksgiving. And there are always yeah. some games that are played. I almost think that you could probably start wrestling and basketball, play a couple games before Christmas break, and then just everybody dive into tournaments over the Christmas break. I think that would be a better. Yeah. I mean, basketball is uh, an easier way to squeeze in more games in the same amount of time. Yes. Right? You just let them play more tournaments. You have a holiday tournament, bam, right there. There's three or four more and you catch back up. In, in, back in my day in Kansas, they would do this deal where they would squeeze an extra round of the playoffs in. You would play the first round of the playoffs on a Thursday. Then you'd play a Tuesday. Remember these days? You'd play Thursday, oh, yeah. Tuesday, and then Saturday. Saturday. And then get back the last couple rounds to play on Fridays uh, before you get to I, You know, player safety is always paramount, but I'll be real honest with you. I kind of miss those days. I mean, it was a grind. And yeah. we, 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 the first four years, we had a magazine. So we had, we were putting, there was Monday games in, in Missouri, and we were squeezing in Monday games into a magazine that printed the next day, much like a daily newspaper 
those those really don't exist because they're all not dailies anymore. They aren't seven days a week, but it was fun. I mean, you had Monday night football, you had Wednesday night football. You, had, you know, it was kind of a, a fun thing. That being said, it's probably not a good idea to play. They're not going to go that way. These days. But it was, I mean, but, well, we won't hesitate now for, you know, the team's going Friday to Thursday. So yeah. it's really, it's one less day than that. You go Thursday to Tuesday. Although Tuesday to Saturday is even one less day than that. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> but yeah, I remember uh, we we uh, we kick off like one on uh, uh, on a on a uh, Saturday in like the second or third round of the playoffs. And well, then, what you found the last few years that Missouri had the the Monday or the Wednesday Monday thing is that the last week of the season became. For the, I think one. I think maybe going in the last year there may have been more games on Thursday nights. Than there well, were on you have Friday because we were like jumping the gun. <laughs> yeah, do every, the last regular season game on a Thursday, first round of playoffs on Wednesday, come back around do Monday, then do Saturday. I think that's 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 feasible. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so, but yeah, I, all right, so we had I've all these notes, Dion, for Snap Tackle Pod Week Six here. Yeah. I haven't got to them yet because we we're just rambling on about uh, what should happen in Kansas and Missouri. But let's get to it, uh, which was. What, uh, you know, the biggest week of the season so far in high school ba- football in uh, in Kansas City. So many crossover games, some huge games, K- Kansas v. Kansas, Missouri v. Missouri. First of all, overall, how those cross- uh, uh, crossover games go in your in your opinion? Well, I went 10-0 and 0 in my picks, so I did thought they really? were fantastic. Yes, yeah. I did. All yes, uh, Coach Walms, Gons, and I uh, had been pretty even all season long, and then we were – it was a week that – Unfortunately for him, we were different on five of the ten games, and I went ten. Were those hours, all so. crossover games? Those ten? Not all. Not all. Most of them were. We had we had the Rock game on there. We had the oh, Blue okay. Valley West game on there. All the big games. North. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the big games. I don't think we picked Ray Peck Blue Valley North. Um, but no, I think you know Rockers Miage was a really good game. Um, Blue Valley Northwest uh, Lee Summit North was a good game for about a half. Uh, and that would and, and Blue Valley Northwest was undermanned in that they were out without their quarterback or stud tight end. Blue Valley North Ray Peck was a good game. Blue Valley North Ray Peck was a good game. Blue Valley West Daily Blue Valley West Daily was a good game. Um, so yeah, there there were there were good games all across the board, and, and I think that um, you saw like a team like Rockers back up their win at Bentonville by beating a, a good Blue Valley or Bishop Miage team. Um, Blue Valley beats Blue Springs in a close game. Um, that was Blue Springs led that game late, and that was a good win for Blue Valley. So. No, it's a, you know, I'd love to see more of these. Love to see the Sunflower League get involved because, you know, Suburban Conference has 28 teams. They could they could do that with just about everybody if they wanted to. Um, you know, in certain, you know, there's certain games they play against, you know, Columbia schools and they bring in some of those schools. But no, a fun week. And this week you've got a few more. You got Rock going to uh, Aquinas. You have St. Saint, Saint James and St. Pius, which, um, St. James was struggling this year, which is uh, so it's not necessarily quite as good a game as it, as it has been uh, when both those teams played for state championships and when St. James won a state title. Um, so, no, it's uh, there's still a few out there this week uh, and, it, and it should be uh, fun to see. Yeah, it should be fun to see. We'll get to those uh, Remax Big Three games of the week coming up in just a little bit. But let's let's stay with last week. Um, Lee Summit North. It's an undermanned Blue Valley Northwest team. They didn't have all their, uh, you know, all their stars out there. The um, Gavin Hoffman, the, the the tight end, going to Iowa. He he was hurt. A couple other guys were. Uh, but Northwest played played strong. But it feels like what Lisa McNorth did what they used to do. That maybe it's close early, but then they just kind of pull away late and uh, and put you away. I, I'm I'm sure that this is not anything that Clint Ryder and his staff uh, didn't break down in film on Saturday morning, but. Just as a general rule, you don't want to let Isaiah Mosey get, I don't know, 20, Wide 30 open. yards <laughs> clear at least twice in a game because Elijah Leonard didn't really even have to struggle to throw him the ball. There was a, The window was wide open. He just had to throw it up, and Mosey had two big touchdowns there, and that's how they broke that thing open in the second half. But, yeah, at least some of the North you know, went through and, and, and took care of their business in that game, and and uh, I think it's hats off for Blue Eye Northwest for keeping that a 7-7 game at halftime. Yeah, no, it was it was close for a long time there. Um, how big of a statement win was that for Gardner Edgerton, forty nine to ten over Mill Valley? Uh, well, I mean, I was going to say, is uh, is it have you recovered in that household yet? Uh, oh, uh, you know, I I thought Gardner would win. I thought Gardner probably would win by a couple scores or more. I I you know I I thought that there was a gap there. I didn't expect it to be what a thousand to nothing in the first ten minutes. It seemed like I like it. That's I mean. I had it on and I was, you know, it's early, you know, the first, 
the first 20 minutes of a Friday night are kind of busy. The scores are coming in and you're trying to you know, keep an eye on the game. And uh, by the time I really kind of was able to look up and get invested, I think it was 21 nothing. <laughs> People, weren't, <laughs> Pretty people weren't trusting your app, Dion. My family kept texting me saying that it must be the wrong score. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was right. Uh, it was the, one of the one of the great things about that uh, app this year. And Brian Rodney, the outstanding guy uh, from Mill Valley, he does their stats. It updates the score. He's really accurate. And unfortunately for Mill Valley, he was very accurate this <laughs> last week. I think what you're seeing out of Gardner is a team that, I think should have won the state championship last year. I think they were the better team than Manhattan. You know, Manhattan has the trophy, so technically I guess they were the better team on that day, but they got a lot of help from Gardner on that day in the state championship game. Um, and I think they have solved some of the ills that plagued them uh, last year and somewhat earlier in this year. They, they aren't putting the ball on the ground. And their version of the flex bone, which is the Dustin Delaney version of the flex bone, is we're going to hit you over the top. We're going to play action early. We're not just using it um as a as a little decoy type thing they're aggressive in their pass game out of the flex bone and they found that uh, against mill valley a couple different times and and really just blows that game wide open and it, when you're trying to think about that it it, it takes things in uh, by the way they're, they're they're not just a cute little flex bone team with some nice size guys they've got athletes and they've got size so they've got everything that, that looks they've got Lathan north this week but uh I was super impressed with how they have progressed as the season has gone on. And it really from game one to game four, there's been no drop off. I mean, they've been the same team each week and that says a lot about their focus coming out of a, a season where they came up very, just, you know, that short of a state championship going for two uh, at the end there against Manhattan. Yeah. I think Braven Powell is a guy that needs to be in the Simone award conversation. I think it's like nine touchdowns to one interception so far. I think he's yeah. for like eight. Uh, the yards are there. Of course, the winds are there. And if you watch him, uh, he was uh, dynamic in that game and has been all uh, all season long. So, yeah, we'll see another big game with the Latham North uh, this week uh, for Gardner. But uh, a statement win last week. Uh, the big game on the Missouri side that was just, you know, two Missouri teams was uh, Oak Park and Platte County. And Oak Park handled Platte County. Is this an Oak Park team that's like, uh, I think we're done, like, just messing up their hair and saying, oh, you know, you know, compared to you know previous Oak Park teams, you're great. This is a great Oak Park team. Are they good enough to to be to be big time players in in uh, big class football, in Missouri? I don't know. I I think they're very talented. Um, the question is, is the, the the depth of of player when you look at a Rockers to Liberty North and a Lee Summit North, those teams are are not only good but they're big and they're deep. Yeah. Um, and Oak Park, I think, is very talented uh, and very good. They're going to take care of most everybody on their schedule. Uh, it'll be interesting. You know, the, the other thing about that is, you know, the way they're playing, the way they're winning, they're getting some of their starters off the field uh, early, which helps. It helps build their depth. So that could be a key for them as well. So uh, I think it'll be interesting when they get into, into district play, um, how they shake out. They should be uh, the number one seed in that district. It's, it's uh, Oak Park, Staley. Uh, the Park Hills and St. Joe Central. St. Joe Central, who's also five and zero as well, um, but I think Oak Park's probably the, the class of that district. I think they should get through that district. I, I think that that they should, but when they come out of that district, uh, you know, what will they do after that? That's the question. But when you come out of that district, it's quarter mm -hmm. quarterfinal. <laughs> quarterfinal, excuse me. What the coffee's for? It's quarterfinals, and that's where you'll be matching up with the really. Mm -hmm. you know kind of traditional class six teams yeah um all right let's talk about uh the new football classifications in kansas yes uh, there for the next two years they will not change uh from 24 <clears throat> 25 these are the football classifications here and they are different than all the other sports most of the other sports take the top 36 teams in 6a then the next 36 and 5a and so forth on down, it, football takes the top 32 in 6A, then the next 32, and they count differently. They count, what, 9 through 11? Mm -hmm. right. They'll take grades 9 through 11 instead of 10 through 12 or 9 through 12, whatever. And so the count is different, and the number of teams in each class is different. A lot of people don't get it. I don't know why it's they, they do it for uh, – for that, you know, what is it? Football and uh, tennis, I believe, in, in Kansas uh, this way. Well, well, and also Kansas is able to able to count 
on a day in September and within a month or less release those numbers. Um, they don't have the issues or they may have issues of teams going eight man or figuring out what they want to do and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, so you don't have, they seem to overcome those issues that Missouri just can't handle. Yeah. They, because in Missouri, you give your number in and then they go, is that your number? Well, where do we fall? So oh, no, so wait, like, no, no, wait, on, no, 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 week one. Missouri allows way too much, you know, they're too worried about filling out a district on whether a team's going to go eight man or drop their program, you know, because they did all this. And then there's a team in, in St. Louis that's a charter program that hasn't played a game yet because they, they don't have enough players. Yeah. So they waited all this time and that team still couldn't get it together. So I, I, I'm not sure why they, they did it in April there for a while. And then they would release in April and, you know, the world didn't end. Kansas does it for a two-year cycle and the world doesn't end. I'm not sure why Missouri has to wait till the last minute and allow people to appeal. The appeal process to me is a joke. Um, I mean, the, the Missouri's Missouri has some issues that, that I think they need to take care of. Uh, you know, cause I always, you know, the, we always thought Lee Summit West would be in class six. I don't know, four to five years before they actually got there. And they suddenly went from class six, five to one of the bigger class six schools yeah. in the Metro. And that's even after they redistricted and sent kids to Lee Summit. Huh. So I don't know if they weren't just counting everyone at Lee Summit West there for a while, or I don't know, there was a certain day that I don't know, a couple hundred kids had to stay home from school. So they weren't counted, but uh, no, it's Missouri is too much. They, they allow too much discussion in the process. Your number is your number. Make a choice. Go. Kansas at least does that. And then what happens next? They'll put them into districts here in another three weeks or so. And then they have the giant AD meeting, which is a lovely thing that they do. And I think it's awesome. They all get together, and that's when they figure out their schedules. Yeah. <laughs> and they get together, and that's where they're horse trading schedules back and forth. And uh, I think that's a neat concept, too, to bring all the ADs together and do scheduling. And uh, it allows some different games to be, happen. And uh, but in Missouri, it's every conference or team for themselves. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a little too much politicking in Missouri. Where, I mean, maybe Kansas is too rigid, but there's way too much politicking in Missouri. Well, the result of the reclassifications uh, here in Kansas this year um, impact a lot of schools in the, oh. in, in the, in the metro area. The, the biggest change happens at 5A. Remember, two years ago at this time, we were talking about all the departures from 5A, right? Aquinas is moving down. Uh, you had Wichita Northwest, who had been to three straight state championship games at that point. They went up. Went up. Um, and now it, you have five teams moving back into 5A, three from 4A, two from 6A. Dion, they're all named brands, too, coming into the 5A. Yes. And – you know, I, I just did a quick look at where the bracket sits right now, where the seeds sit right now. And depending on how it all shakes out on, on, on teams, they would move to the to the west because of, you know, just yeah. positioning in 5A. You have Lansing and Sumner going down. So those two are, I think, 13 and 14 in the bracket. So they're going down to four. You got to move three more teams out of that bracket to fit in the five that are all on the east side in. And it'd be like Emporia, easy, move them over. Well, they're like the 12th seed. Um, and be a couple Topeka of West is the 15 seed. Have I have I uttered a single number yet? I'm all double digit seeds here that yeah. I'm moving out. Yeah. And then maybe it's Topeka Seaman, which is the nine seed. So it's all bottom half bracket teams that would be moving out of that bracket, just hypothetically. And you move in St. Thomas Aquinas, St. James. Baser Linwood, who, you know, I would say that of those five teams, you has a little more name brand. Oh, and then we're going to drop down Blue Valley and Blue Valley North. And you say, well, Blue Valley North hasn't been that successful the last few years. Yeah, but they've also been to three state championship games and won one in the last six, seven years. And they are under a new coach in Drew Hudgens, and they are an improved football team, uh, even though they have yet to kind of break through and get those wins. That I is a. It would be, it would be Seaman moving before Highland Park to the west. It looks okay. like Highland Park is like a few blocks east of Seaman, <laughs> right? You drew a line that is very close. So I know we were talking about that beforehand. As I've seen and High, Highland Park is currently the number one number one seed because it's based on wins and they're undefeated. Yeah. Um, 
And and look, the Highland Park's having a great season for them. But this is a team that last year broke a 50 game losing streak. So no, no down on Highland Park. But if you move Seaman, that's the nine seed. So you moved out five of the bottom eight seeds and you brought in several teams that have either played for or won a state title in the last you know decade. Well, I, can, I mean, I can tell you, you you would you would you would put those teams with Mill Valley, DeSoto, Blue Valley Southwest, right? And uh Spring Hill, right? And that mm-hmm. you would, that would be your top eight, right? Right there. All, all that's, the nine. that's nine. That's nine. That's <laughs> nine. <laughs> so and given and then given the conferences that those teams play in, there's a possibility that you could be a Blue Valley North and have two wins and be sitting in a 14 spot. Yeah. And you go play a three. Maybe it's a Blue Valley Southwest. Maybe it's you know, maybe it's Blue Valley. Johnny Heights. Johnny Heights got into the quarterfinals last year. They would be on the side as well. Yeah. So I mean, it's it it makes that one. I mean, generally speaking, in a one to sixteen bracket, you're going to have some soft spots. I don't know if there are soft spots past the one and two. You know what I'm saying? The fifteen and the sixteen might be a you know, but there's we're going to have a. I, I I don't. I don't well, want to guarantee and, and, anything. And There'll be a double-digit like, seed win in the first round next year. There'll be a double-digit seed. James and Aquinas and Blue Eyes Southwest will be playing in the EKL, right? You, you, yeah. they could, you could feasibly have state championship quality teams there that go into the playoffs at four and four, right? So, yeah. I mean, that eight nine game could be just monster game. That that could be a, almost like a semifinal type game. What's up, saying? A double-digit seed will win in the first round next year. No, yeah, most of the time it happens, I guess. But a but a but a 14 or a 13. I mean, we're talking a double, double digit seed, like yeah. down the bracket. Yeah. Somebody's going to end up with a spot and say, oh, that's, I mean, so yeah, it's, it, it, it's interesting. And, but what you see is the growth, you know, Mays went up and Wichita West went up. So that's where you're seeing some growth. And I was, the, the thing that stunned me the most was the Blue Valleys coming out. I mean, there's, I there's only two, there would be only two Blue Valleys in 6A. Yeah. West and and, and uh, Northwest. And I know the area around Blue Valley North is 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 not when you say getting older, but is a there's no growth there. I mean that's a land yeah. la, landlocked area, and you know people when their kids graduate, maybe they're not you know they're not moving out, and younger families are coming in and and, and making those numbers bigger. I give you one example: uh, there is no longer a, any Delong children in the Blue Valley system. Uh, you know both his daughters are gone, so. The, there's no new children in that house that are going to the Blue Valley School District. So there's two kids in the last three years that are out of the Blue Valley uh, School District. You know, I think one went to Blue Valley and one went to Blue Valley North. But uh, that's just an example right there. When you're, I mean, let's be real. There's there's one less Schaefer kid over the last three years that has gone through. But yeah. in your neighborhood, there's probably <laughs> you can't wait to get them all out. I'm sure. But uh, no, it's it's just the the, the demographics of, of things and. I remember a time when Shawnee Mission South dropped down into 5A for a short amount of time. One, um, one state basketball doing that, I believe. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just the demographic change. And uh, I'm not stunned that Mays went up. I mean, that's a growing area down yeah. there around Wichita. And Mays I, I know went up. Wichita West went up. Uh, you have uh, Lansing dropping down to 4A. Sumner dropping down to 4A. Cape and Mount Carmel, a longtime 5A staple, is down in 4A now. But, yeah, and Cape and too. So, and. Uh, it it or four right man they're like all right we got I mean we've got me age but <laughs> Quinn's out of here say James out of oh here comes Capen Capen currently number one in the uh, K preps rankings you know ahead of Mill Valley so in five A so yeah you got the number one team looking to move down you know depending on how they shake out at the end of the year but no I like I said the the, the Blue Valley's ones are the ones that kind of stunned me I, I wasn't as stunned by Blue Valley North because like I said I know it's landlocked but. Blue Valley, you know, the, 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 that's in an older well, part of town as well. Close, right? They, yeah. I mean, they've, they've been a 5A team before. Um, feels like whenever so, there's yeah. a school, that's when they they, they, they to get it. But there's obviously not a new school. All right. Uh, let's move on to the REMAX Big Three games of the week this week. Um, um, Dion will start in Kansas, Eudora, and Lewisburg. Why are you taking this one? Well, one, Lewisburg's been so good. Um, I, I like Eudora a lot, but they lost Ottawa in a close game last week. Good win for Ottawa. I mean, Ottawa's sitting at two and two for the first time in a while. Um, I got to think Eudora's got to look to bounce back. <laughs> two yeah. and zero, and now they're zero and two. Uh, but Lewisburg, uh, Declan Battle, their quarterback's outstanding. Uh, they've just been blowing people out. Uh, so this is this is a you know these midseason 
frontier league games are are kind of like the EKL boy it's a it's a dog fight and you're seeing uh this go the through I I like Lewisburg in this game but Eudora is a hungry team mm-hmm. Olathe North at Gardner Edgerton Gardner back at home on the uh, spectrum game of the week for a second week in a row that's how good they are they're on the yes. uh, you really you really see that I don't know if I've ever seen that back to back that is back to back weeks for spectrum uh and so this is if you're a Latha North, you got to try and get this one because this is a this is probably a good chance you're going to play this game again. And the question is, where are you going to play it? Uh, the winner would probably get the home field advantage uh, with that one seed. And and if you're a Latha North, do you want to be making two trips to Gardner this year or just one? So that's kind of what's out in front of you. One and then hope hopefully you're on different sides of the bracket uh, yeah. as well. They don't want to see either one wants to see each other um, in the playoffs. Uh, but this is uh, leg two of their big three game stretch for Gardner after this they go to Lawrence um who's had a nice start to the season at three and one so they get out of this uh, um you know unscathed then I mean I don't know if there's any questions at that that point uh that need to be asked about Gardner uh Rockhurst at Aquinas couple of uh one loss teams well I think this is a a game for for Rock to kind of just back up what they've been doing uh, you know Aquinas has been rolling along I mean they really haven't been tested outside of the first week of the season by one uh, loss I mean Aquinas is 4-0 of course yes <laughs> I was gonna see how long it took you to correct yeah. yourself on that one I wasn't gonna out you uh, right there but uh no I mean uh they they after after that first week the Blue Alley West where they were in a shootout have really been uh have really been just kind of rolling along Rockhurst defensively looks as good as anybody in the Metro they really have bounced back from that loss to Liberty North and and I think that, that they're kind of saying that that was a difference maker. You know, last week we had Kelly Donahoe on the show and before we went on the air. He said that he said that they were they they really took that loss of Liberty North hard. So they were in the bus on the way down to uh, uh, Bentonville and they were driving by some golf course he named. Saw guys out there playing golf. And he thought to himself, what am I doing? What you know what? <laughs> <laughs> this is why am I, you know stressing out we lost that game he took that loss really hard uh they go down to Bentonville they went on a, a field goal in the last second in a crazy atmosphere and a, you know they played fantastic and eight thousand people and he said he on bus ride back was like this is the greatest job in the world I don't know why I would ever think <laughs> so I think that was a really breakthrough that Bentonville game is a breakthrough win for them and they backed it up against me Asian I think I have a chance to back it up against Aquinas um so no I you know I I think Aquinas too if, if you can go and go toe-to-toe with Rock and get a win or or take it down at the end you got to feel physically you you are a team uh that is good enough to win a state championship in 4a your you know your biggest challenge is probably going to be me age uh which i think they have the next week um or at least in two weeks in the next couple of weeks uh so this is you know for aquinas this is the big this is a big test like you know the measuring stick before they play me age which is the other measuring stick on their on their schedule on the Missouri side, you got Lee Summit at Oak Park, a two and three Lee Summit team, a five and oh Oak Park team. Are you thinking that maybe there's a letdown for the Northmen here? What was this one on your big three? Uh, well, I like Lee, Lee Summit's got some athletes. Uh, they played pretty tough all season long. Uh, this is just a, this is a you know kind of a heat check on Oak Park. Like sure. don't get don't get caught looking ahead. See you know uh, and you know because Lee Summit's a good football team and, and they're gonna they're gonna come out and and uh, play tough on you. So. No, I, I I like this game. I just think they're you know it's a it's a conference game for the two of them, and um, you know it's it's a good chance for Oak Park to kind of say, okay, we're 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 just crossing things off our list. But if you're Lee Summit, just keep you know keep competing each week and 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 see what happens. Smithville at a surprising Raytown South team. Both these teams are four and one. You see the the Cardinals running out to this kind of start. Yeah, and and William Harris, the coach there, uh, you know they they only won they won four games last or yeah I think it won three games last year. They already won four this year. That's after winning three for in the span of three years before. Uh, yeah. You know he he got when he first got there. He's in this is a third year now. Um, I, this is a test for Raytown South. This is the the, the second most quality opponent they've had outside of Gravy uh, and Smithville. Uh, the, the, there's a good relationship there between Coach Harris uh, at at uh, Raytown South and Coach Ambrosian at, at Smithville, um, and so. I think that this is a, a test for both teams. You know, for Smithville, good chance to see some of the speed that Raytown South has. Kind of get yourself, you know, acclimated to you know some of the teams you may see down the line in a conference game. Um, two good teams, both four and one, and uh, we'll see what Raytown South's got. 
Yep. Of all the 4-1 teams, St. Michael at Van Horn this week. Who do you right. like? Better? Crossroads Conference. You know, I really like Van Horn until they kind of laid an egg against Lincoln Prep last week. Good win for Lincoln Prep, but Van Horn have been just dominating people. Uh, and I, you know, have a kind of an in over there. The principal's a buddy of mine and he said they, Lincoln played very well and they came out very flat. Yeah, and I think that's the that's the test when you're a team like Van Horn that has had a you know a five win season, a six win season. You know when you start looking that you can't get looking down that schedule going, well, we should win all our games. Well, no, you got to win the one in front of you first before you think about anything else down the line. Uh, this is the Crossroads Conference. This is probably for the conference title. St. Michael, outside of getting crushed by St. Pius, has played pretty well all season. So, you know, both these teams sitting at four and one, and and uh, you know the winner gets that. It's a small conference. There's only four teams, so you only have three conference games. But uh, if you're St. Michael and you're thinking about you want to compete in a very deep Class 2, you have to play well against a team that's built like Van Horn in Class 4. All right, Deanna, any final Simone Award thoughts? Uh, our guy Ty Williams at uh, Grain Valley, not a one-hit wonder. Follow that up with, what, another 300 yeah. yards or whatever? Well, two, yeah, 300 combined yards. He had 125 yards receiving, 235 yards rushing, four total touchdowns. Uh, he's a guy, you know, we got our Simone watch coming out uh, this week. And, you know, it's it's a wide open field. You brought up Raven Powell from uh, Gardner. Uh, he's a guy, Dylan Dunn last week, had another huge week uh, from Blue Valley Southwest. So it's a, there's a lot of good running backs out there and and, and a lot of good players. So it's it's going to be an interesting year. Ty Williams definitely is, is off to the he's, – he's kind of – he's distanced himself in his categories. I mean – his ability to go catch the ball and 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 make big plays in that part too. I mean, when you're averaging 30 yards a grab uh, for the season, uh, and you've got I think six touchdowns in, six, in five games receiving to go along with I think 15 uh, rushing, uh, it's it definitely shows his versatility. But no, it's uh, it, we're we're starting to get going. The first Simone meeting is this week as as we kind of get ready for that. But uh, it should be. Interesting uh, to see how that all shakes out. And, of course, the other awards, you know, you've got the Buchanan and the, the Taylor. The, the, the deepest award might be the Taylor. I mean, you – I was going to say, like, the Singleton kid from uh, Gardner needs to be in that conversation. I know we talk a lot well, about the, and the Smith kid at uh, Liberty North, but add another name. Yeah, I mean, it's like Oprah out there. you got a great receiver. you got a great receiver. you got a great receiver. And, uh, you know, it's there's a lot of great kids playing receiver this year, and that that's going to be a deep award. And, of course, you know, how can you not say that the Buchanan is not the – the Buchanan is the – uh, which power five school will you end up in the NFL award? That's what that's right. Become. That's what it is. <laughs> because uh, uh, you got Williams, Winery, you know, who's, you know, some say the number one recruit in the country. If nothing else, if he's not number one in your mind, he's probably top 10, which doesn't really negate yeah, anything. I mean, what's the difference? Honestly, you have Melvin, you have Melvin Laster, who's who's won won two, who dropped 25 to 30 pounds and looks like a little bit different player. I mean, better than he was when he won the first two. Um, so, you know, he's he's a guy to keep an eye on that one. So, the Caden is deep. Woods, who's just wrecking games they, at, yeah. uh, at Mill Valley, who's the number one recruit in Kansas in the 2025 class. Yeah. So, I don't know. If you don't have a Power 5 offer, I don't know if you expect to be right. in the Final Four in that award. I, I mean, like, I'm not joking. I mean, there's – what? I mean, is Carl, I mean, Carlos you, Davis is still the, the I mean, kid, uh uh, at uh, Aquinas, um, uh, Marks, right, and then Keenan. Yeah, Payne, Marks is going to Missouri. Two. Yeah, they they got uh, they got two uh, big time D one guys as well. So it's a uh, the 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 Buchanan Award is definitely where the, if you're looking for the big time recruits and and soon to be you know. Well, I mean, we got. I mean, that includes um, offensive line too. By the way, yes. so Sprague at Rockers who's going to Michigan. Yes, yes. I mean, we didn't mention those guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Look, uh, and let's not uh, forget right, uh, Hales, the kid at Olathe North, who's a D1 guy. You got the Olathe East kid, Carroll, who's a D1 uh, offensive lineman. Yeah. So, so not even the fact, if you think about this, Gus Hawkins Felix, in Mill Valley going to K State. I, I was Felix, who got drafted by the Chiefs in the first round, wasn't even a semifinalist his senior year no. of high school. No. I mean, wasn't even the top 10. No. Tommy, out of Ottawa, was all right yeah out of bar way um yeah he won it i mean it's that's what i'm saying you're talking about nfl guys coming out of that out of the buchanan so the buchanan's always 
deep and has gotten deeper every year. Uh, if there's one thing Kansas City seems to be able to produce, it's offensive and defensive linemen. You know, uh, Braden Smith, a three-time non-winner, three-time finalist for the Buchanan yeah. Award because the people he lost to were also in the NFL. Uh, Elijah Lee. Uh, uh, no, he was Elijah Lee for two years and Carlos Davis. Oh, it wasn't even. Uh... No, he was a freshman when, when Evan was when okay. Evan was. Uh, but uh, Braden, uh, who uh, you know, as we always joked, we had the, pr- the 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 announcement for the finalist award show at, at Arrowhead every year, and yeah. he never made it to that show because that's the time he lifted in the yeah. evening. <laughs> he wasn't going to miss a lift, <laughs> and obviously it paid off as the uh, you know starting is he the right tackle or right guard for the Colts right now? I think he yeah. he's started for them, so yeah. Should be fun. Yep. Good stuff. All right. We are getting out of here. Thanks so much for watching. You got Snap Tackle Pod. We'll see you next week. Enjoy all your games, wherever they may be, on Friday night. Uh, and when you get back, or if you're at home all night, whatever, check out prepskc.com throughout the night. And then check us out on uh, Under the Lights on KSHB 41. Dion will be there with Aaron Ladd, uh, you know, answering all the important questions about how Kansas. Yes. City. And then our, our coverage usually got stuff up on the website. A little bit after midnight, it kind of rolls in. And then I also very nicely tweet out all of the stories in the morning, scheduled out nicely so that it flows through your Twitter so yeah. you don't have to go searching. Okay. Appreciate so. that. He, he cares about us. Dion, <laughs> Dion does. Yes. Big, big, big old heart there. All right, Dion, thanks so much for the time. We'll see you next time right here on Tackle Pop.